Welcome to this edition of Pre-Internet Plane Spotting, brought to you by Jetflix. Hi guys, my name is Henry Tenby and welcome to my channel. This is Jetflix TV. We are producers of the Jetflix aviation streaming apps and the Jetflix streaming service. You might want to check it out. But in the meantime, I'd like to tell you about these amazing spruce goose images I found. As many of you know, I collect, acquire, and purchase collections of 35 millimeter color slides of aircraft. If you have an old slide collection that you'd like to sell or get rid of, of course, please do contact me. And these slides are very unique, very special. They were taken around 1980 when the Howard Hughes Spruce Goose was set up as a display in Long Beach Harbor. They're really incredible. I've never seen images like this before. They're color, and I hope you find this presentation interesting. No, the term spruce goose was never a term used or coined by Howard Hughes. It was actually the media that gave the aircraft that name as a tongue-in-cheek reference to a huge amount of money that was spilt or spent to make an airplane out of wood to cater to Uncle Sam's long-haul troop transport needs of the 1940s. Howard Hughes designed and built the aircraft and at first flew, the one time, on November the 2nd, 1947. The aircraft was officially designated as a Hughes H-4 Hercules when it first flew in 1947 and it was registered NX-37602. It was famous because it was actually the largest flying boat ever built and had the largest wingspan of any aircraft that had ever flown up until a composite aircraft exceeded the wingspan of the Goose or the Hercules when it flew on April the 13th of 2019, believe it or not. And here's a terrific view, aerial view, taken of the aircraft being removed from the water by the use of huge cranes at the time that the aircraft was taken landside and a huge dome was built around the aircraft for public presentation in the Long Beach Harbor in 1980. As a factual footnote to the project, it was Henry J. Kaiser, who was a leading shipbuilder of the day, who actually teamed up with Howard Hughes to create the aircraft. The plan was to design a massive aircraft that could carry 150,000 pounds, 750 fully equipped troops, or two 30-ton M4 Sherman tanks. It was decided to build the aircraft out of a wood veneer consisting mainly of birch, simply because metal was in terrifically short supply because of the World War II consumption needs of the metal aircraft that were being constructed by the main aircraft manufacturers and other industries such as shipping, tanks, and armor divisions. Although large sections of the aircraft, including wood components from Wisconsin, were prefabricated in Wisconsin and shipped to California, where the Hughes Aircraft Company put the airplane together, work proceeded quite slowly initially, but it did take a number of years to complete the project. The plane was built by the Hughes Aircraft Company at Hughes Airport, which is the location of present-day Playa Vista, Los Angeles. The aircraft was then final assembled very close to the Long Beach Harbor and rolled into the water where the final flight and first flight was taken on the famous day back in 1947. The H-4 never did fly again, and there was a team of almost 300 Hughes employees that were all sworn to secrecy, and they somewhat maintained the aircraft in a believed to be close to and or flying condition in a climate-controlled hangar up until 1962. This particular image shows the aircraft without its engines as it was being maneuvered in the harbor to be removed from the water and taken landside for display in 1980. It was in 1980 that the aircraft was acquired by the Aero Club of Southern California, and they're the ones who put the aircraft on display in a very large geodosic dome next to the Queen Mary in Long Beach Harbor, which of course became a famous tourist attraction 
in the 1980s and 1990s. With the passage of time, the Aero Club decided that owning and maintaining the aircraft as a business didn't fit with their organizational needs, and they started seeking a new purchaser to take over the aircraft. After a very long and difficult search, the Aero Club of Southern California finally found a new home for the Spruce Goose. It was the Evergreen Aviation Space Museum in McMinnville, Oregon, who agreed to take on the project. The deal was they'd take the airplane and share some of the museum revenues with the Aero Club of Southern California in recognition of having the fantastic aircraft at their museum. The aircraft was actually transported in pieces by barge, train, and then truck to its current home at the airport at McMinnville, Oregon, where the Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum resides. The aircraft arrived at the airport in McMinnville on February the 27th, 1993, and to this day, that is where the aircraft rests and is cared for so that everybody can enjoy. I hope you've enjoyed my presentation on the concise history of the world-famous Spruce Goose, the H-4 Hercules, as it does cement Howard Hughes as one of America's great aviators, and his efforts in building the world's largest flying boat will surely be remembered for generations to come. If you enjoyed this video, I'd very much appreciate a thumbs up and I look forward to your comments below. Are you a die-hard av geek who loves aviation videos? Welcome to Jetflix TV where all the aviation action is. Stream and download hundreds of aircraft action videos on all your favorite devices. Sit back, relax, and start enjoying the best in aviation action movies exclusively from the crew at Jetflix TV. We will see you rampside.